Hi, uh, Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Uh, I'm Dr. Aizati. So in this um, pharmacogenomics uh, paper, I will be teaching uh, in the beginning part of the uh, of the course in which uh, we will have a look at the uh, introduction to DNA and gene regulation. Uh, what what are the gene polymorphisms that are related to pharmacogenomics, um, and uh, some of the application in uh, diseases. So we'll start with the first uh, lecture, which is the introduction to DNA and gene regulation. So uh, the learning objective of this uh, lecture is to discuss more on Mendelian genetics. Um, to explain the structure of DNA and its components, I believe this is just a recap for you guys. Uh, we want to define what is chromosome, what, what, it, what are genes, what are alleles, uh, what is DNA transcription, what is DNA translation, and we want to relate the DNA trans transcription and translation to gene expression and function. So this is... Um, this is uh, Gregor Mendel. I think you have, might have heard of him. He is an Australian Austrian monk. Uh, he spent eight years of doing experiment with bees. He wants to study the genetic and heritability. And he proposed uh, a principle of heritability, uh, heredity in uh, 1865. So uh, he is quite famous for Mendelian law, if you uh, have heard of it. So Mendel have studied seven characteristics uh, in bees. So in in his um, garden, he have tested with so many uh, variations of bees. Some of them have yellow seed and, uh, and some of them have green seed. Uh, some of them have um, yellow pot color and some of them has green. And the flower position is also different. Uh, some of it is uh, actual, some of it is uh, on terminal. And the stem length is also different. So he was wondering what are the, um, what are the uh, differences between these bees in genetic-wise um, that makes them so different. So uh, he came up with this law, Mendel Mendelian law, and it consists of three concepts. So first one is law of segregation. So it means... Uh, during reproduction, during gamete formation, the alleles for each uh, gene from each parent will segregate uh, into gametes. So gamete, uh, is, which is the progeny, will contain two alleles. So each of the alleles come from each parent. The second law is the law of independent assortment, which uh, genes were genes for different traits can segregate independently during the formation of gamete. So the progeny can get either one of the alleles. So it's 50-50 chance. The third law is law of dominance, in which some alleles are dominant while others are recessive. An organism, an organism uh, with at least one dominant allele will display the effect of the dominant allele, which means that uh, from two alleles that we have, one of it is dominant while another one is recessive, meaning that if... Uh, uh, if, for example, uh, green pot is dominant while yellow pot is recessive, meaning uh, the progeny or the gamete will come up with a green pot. So that, that P will come up with a green pot instead of the yellow pot. So uh, this is the structure of uh, DNA. So we, we can have a look at the chromosome itself. So if we see here, starting from the nucleus of a cell, so each cell has its own nucleus, and the nucleus contains all the genetic information, which which is uh, which are all the chromosomes uh, of the person. So if we untangle that chromosome, it is actually formed by two alleles. And if we open it a bit, uh, we can see the histone part, and also, if we open it uh, some more, we can see that it is uh, formed by double-strand helix. And this double-strand helix are uh, actually formed by uh, building blocks of nucleotide. So now we uh, come back to the definition for a bit. 
So we look at the definition of chromosome. It is a microscopic thread-like part of the cell that carries hereditary information of the in the form of genes. So each chromosome is made up of DNA tightly coiled many times around proteins called histones that support its structure. So we see before the histone is actually to support the structure of DNA during the entanglement. So chromosome is actually um, the structure, the, the structure that contains the genetic information. Uh, what about genes? So genes is the DNA segment that, that contributes to phenotype uh, or function. So gene is actually what we call uh, the the segment that carries that certain genetic uh, information. So these genes uh, are actually uh, the one that that will be uh, coding the phenotype or coding for the function of certain cell. Uh, DNA is the is the just the name for deoxyribonucleic acid. And nucleotide, as I mentioned before, it is the building block of the DNA. So it composed of phosphate backbones, sugar, and either one of the uh, nucleotide bases. So in 1969, a Swiss physician, uh, Friedrich Meischer, I, I hope I pronounce it correctly, he extracted DNA from the nuclei of human WBC. So he is the first one who extracted DNA from the nuclei of a human cell. And since then, the researchers are trying to elucidate the structure of a DNA. And uh, these are the people who are pioneering the, the study of um, DNA. So you might have come across the name of Watson and Crick um, and also Maurice Wilkins, perhaps. So, so there's, it is a, quite a drama and controversy controversial uh, story behind it but um, basically they are the ones who are um, who discovers the DNA structure so in 1951 uh, this girl uh, Rosalind Franklin uh, she used x-ray crystallography to figure out the helical structure of DNA so the picture is called photon 51 so she is the first who capture the DNA structure uh, and her work was confirmed by the 3D structure made by James Watson and Francis Crick. And in 1953, uh, James Watson and Francis Crick uh, published a paper uh, regarding this uh, helical structure of DNA. And in, in 1962, uh, they both, uh, together with Maurice Wilkins, were awarded with a Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for solving the DNA structure. Okay. So you can uh, Google up the story behind it in more details. So this is the, the basic structure for each nucleotide. As I mentioned before, the nucleotide have, uh, has three components, okay, phosphate uh, region, uh, the sugar, and the, nucle the nitrogen bases. So nitrogen bases uh, is either A, adenine, T-thymine, G-guanine, or C-cytosine. So in the formation of double helix, um, the, uh, the nitrogen bases will be attached through the hydrogen bonds. So A will always be together with T and the C, and C will always be together with G, so A, T, C, G. Uh, meanwhile, in RNA, it's a, uh, it's, there is a slight difference in which RNA does not have thymine. Instead, it has uracils. So what is gene expression? So, so the, the term here means that the, that the processes that occurs uh, when the gene, the genetic information in the gene is being translated into something or being portrayed into um, specific protein or specific uh, uh, a specific uh, feature the DNA transcription and DNA translation are the processes involved in the gene expression so DNA transcription occurs when the DNA uh, 
from the double helix, the DNA sequence um, of a specific gene is being copied into mRNA. So from DNA, it becomes uh, mRNA. And the DNA translation occurs when this mRNA sequence is being decoded or being translated into amino acid. And later on, it formed a polypeptide in which uh, it will, in the end, it formed proteins. How is uh, gene expression regulated? So gene expression um, involves, like I mentioned before, it involves transcription. And before it's being uh, translated, it has to undergo uh, RNA splicing first. And once it is translated, uh, it will undergo post-translational modification before the specific protein or specific enzyme can be uh, functional in human body. And this gene expression process is self-regulatory, meaning that uh, it doesn't need any, any cue. So whenever there is a, a need for a new um, protein or a new enzyme, so the gene will automatically um, undergo gene expression. So this diagram shows the gene expression together with the location where it occurs. So it starts with the DNA inside the nucleus. So whenever there is a gene expression occurs, the DNA will uncoil and a DNA strand will be transcribed into RNA strand. And before that, you have to know that the DNA consists of uh, exon and intronic regions. So exons are the protein coding segment in the DNA, while intron is the segment of the, of the DNA that, that uh, does not code for any protein. So this is just a filler. So uh, all of the segment will be transcribed into RNA and uh, the intron regions of the RNA will be uh, removed and the RNA uh, in the exonic region of the RNA will be spliced together forming a uh, an mRNA and uh, this mRNA will be um, attached to a polytail so that it will be uh, transported or the, it will be exported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. So in the cytoplasm uh, the DNA translation occurs uh, in which um, the mRNA strand will be translated into amino acid sequence um, in which uh, the amino acid sequence will be forming a polypeptide and then in the end, it will become a, a structure of a protein. So as I mentioned before, RNA splicing is the process that removes the intervening known coding sequence of genes which are the introns from pre-mRNA. And it will join together only the exonic region of the mRNA. So post-translational modification, as I mentioned before, the proteins um, that are being translated from mRNA will need to undergo certain modification first before it becomes fully functional uh, in the human uh, body or in the body cells. So this um, post-translational modification involves glycosylation, acetylation, alkylation, methylation or other um, processes in which it will, uh, it will also help in the identification and the uh, cellular function of the protein. So this diagram is uh, showing the uh, complexity of a uh, human body in which uh, from the genome, from the genetic uh, profile, we have uh, around 20 to 25,000 genes. So these are the genetic code uh, for our body. Once it is being transcribed uh, in which here, so the total of transcriptome, which is the transcript, the DNA, uh, mRNA transcript uh, stands uh, around about 100,000 of transcript. And then it is being translated 
and uh, having post translational modification into uh, proteins. So it can actually have more than one uh, million proteins out of that uh, transcripts or out of that uh, genes. So that's all for this uh, topic from me. So this is just a very brief and basic explanation of DNA and gene regulation because this is just a recap for what, from what you have uh, learned before. But uh, this knowledge of the DNA structure and regulation is actually very important for you uh, to know before we go further uh, into the next topic uh, in pharmacogenomics uh, course. So I... Uh, that's all for me. Thank you very much.